Welcome to the bonus video on the second channel where we're going to spend a long time talking about the maths of these things. So, over to you. Well, on the, the first video we talked about the Gauss-Binet theorem. Yes. Um, but actually there's probably, you know, an even, so if that was the Sistine Chapel, this is the Statue of David. Oh, okay. Uh, another sort of great work, and maybe possibly greater. I don't. I've probably got those the let's, wrong way let's around. Let's not start a top ten yeah. here, right? <laughs> let's, let, let's certainly not get into a history of art discussion. Neither of us. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, but let's start with it. Go back to this yeah. nice the flat, flat triangle. Flat triangle, and so as we established, this has no. There's no spare angle, and so when we build them out, we it, just it stays. Keep on it stays flat. Going flat. So it doesn't force itself to be curved, but, no, but I you can, could curve it. I can pick this up, and I can sort of. Oh, you could. Can you join them together? I can connect them up. Oh, nice. So you're going to make a cylinder. Yeah. And um, so you're, you know, you're just forcing some curvature into the surface. Yeah. And so if you've seen you know, uh, lovely videos about bending pizza. Oh, cliff stalls. Um, w would you recommend that as viewing before this, or...? I, I, well, at some point. It's optional, it's a, yeah. It's a nice, it's a similar, it's the same result, but it's a different take. We're, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper. Definitely watch on number file. I'll link to it in the description if I remember. Cliff Stoll's video about Gaussian curvature and um, pizza. It's really nice. Um, so we've sort of... You've made a tube. And so that, what happened was we, we did that bending. Yeah. And we've sort of done that without really distorting the surface. No. And the theorem egregion says that uh, you can, uh, surfaces can, can change how they're embedded in space without changing that Gaussian curvature. Um, and so here we can actually look at Gaussian curvature quite easily for so the cylinder. Quick recap on Gaussian curvature. So um, you can think about if I take a point here, it sort of exists on a straight line here, and at 90 degrees to that, we have a circle. Right. So uh, for any surface, actually, you know what, let's just grab a random surface, yeah. if, if you don't mind. And we've got several here. We're about to say, if there's ever a time to grab a surface. Yeah. And this, so if you were to pick any point on this, imagine yeah. it's an ideal surface, mm -hmm. any point on the surface, you can find the direction that has maximum curvature. Yeah. The direction with minimum curvature. Yep. Amazingly, they're always at right angles to each other, yep. which I think is phenomenal. That is, I mean, it sounds like it should be intuitive, but I would not have uh, predicted that. I don't find it. I, I find it magical. I've talked to other mathematicians who feel that it's just natural and that's the way no, things I'm are. I'm with you on magical. Um, but I, I, I like to find mathematics magical. Normally, when it's like, and obviously it's always at 90 degrees, you're like, well, that's obvious. No, but in this case, I don't see why that has to hold for a surface. So sorry if you find that obvious. We think it's amazing. Um, and then your Gaussian curvature, you, you take those two different curvatures, the right angles, max and min. Yeah, and you multiply them together. Three. Now, so this, when you do that, there's three things that can happen. So in this case, I've got one curve going this way yeah. and one curve going the other way. So whichever way we do it, one of them is going to be positive and the other negative. So when we mul multiply those together, we get a negative yeah. number. If we take something like this sphere, yep. uh, and now a sphere is a slightly more complicated thing because the curvature is the same in all directions. Oh yeah. Um, so you don't get the unique directions, you can choose any pair, but they're both going the same way, so you multiply them together, you get a positive yeah. number. And it might be that we have two negative numbers multiplied together to get positive, or However two you want positive. to define positive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So this... This started, this started its life flat. Yeah. And so that's zero times zero. Zero. Um, but now we've got zero. Well, wow. times, times, who cares? Something else, it's gonna be zero. So the short moral of the story is, you can only ever bend it one way. So, and we can, you know, with this model, we can... You can force it, ah, uh, it's, it's broken. It's really, you've distorted it's no it. longer nicely a surface. Yeah, it's, you've, yeah, you've ruined the integrity of the surfaces. It, it, it's sort of trying to do something as, as, as we bend it. And that's the pizza result. Because it means as long as you curve it one way, the other one has to stay straight. Yeah. And so the pizza doesn't droop. And, and that geometry is why things like cylindrical models that are used you know, in a lot of engineering, like pillars and so on, those are very strong. Because they, they, you know, it's not the material strength. It's the mathematics that gives them the strength. So if we want to make something like a torus, 
Which is a cylinder bent. Yes. But what we have is, so here, here I have a nice flat triangle yep. on the top, and I've got some of that. But here, I've got a positively curved yep. triangle. And then in the middle, we've got... The negative ones. Yeah. And so these sort of connect together. And because this is now a closed surface, it seems to be rigid. Yeah. Now, interestingly, we know that, and I hope I can get this result <laughs> correct, but I, we know that if you have only positive curvature yeah. and you have something that closes up, then it has to be rigid. Okay, so that, that's going to be locked. So, but if you have some positive and some negative curvature, we, I think all the examples we have end up being rigid, but right. we don't have a proof oh, really? that it will always be a rigid object if you've got negative curvature. In There's it. no proof that there are no floppy donuts. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Oh, and by the way, just the reason that this, this works, the cylinder doesn't, is because we've had to cheat and you've taken some curvature from one side of the cylinder and it ends up over yeah. here, right? Yeah, so you've got the positive around the outside. And you've got a negative around And the that's cancelling with the negative. And there's an interesting sort of counting that, so we have uh, 12 five connectors yeah. um, and, and triangles on those. Yeah. And then we have six squares. Yeah, but the, and those, so six the connectors on the so inside. So the, the sixes making squares sort of each cancel out two of two the fives. Two of the triangle. <sighs> um, so there's some really nice sort of counting nice. versions of, of, of um, the gauss bonnet theorem that we talked about in, in this system that you can use to... But I want to look a little bit at this, this sort of central region with mm -hmm. these squares. And I... Uh, didn't prepare properly because I wanted to get some six connectors and actually build something. Um, Would you want to pull this one apart? Uh, yeah, that or that works, yes. Okay, so. that's a bit of a shame because we just put it together, but well. Uh, but it shows how easy these things come apart. So even though this sort of, uh, this is just marketing Pretty, pitch yeah. entirely, you know, this is nicely connected, I can just go in and I just push up the pieces oh, yeah. and they just come apart. That's incredible. I had no idea how close we were to being an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is going to be the, the infomercial with the most exactly. mathematics. Uh... But Edmund, I accidentally squash a lot of my shapes. <laughs> what would happen if I squashed curvahedra? There you go. What? <laughs> it compacts and springs back. I mean, I mean, serious point, mylar is surprisingly... Like, if you've got small kids, this stuff's incredible. Yeah. So, anyway. They can learn mathematics, and it's not going to be something that's fragile. And I think that's worth saying, because I'm, I need to sell this. You've got to say, it's got to, I'm staying in Edmund's spare room. Uh, this is his house, obviously. And there is a lot of curvahedra in the spare room where I'm staying. I'm in, like, the world headquarters slash warehouse. But I think, you know, the reason I want to sell it is because I think this you is a great way. You believe in the product for people to, to learn some cool mathematics. And that's what, let's get back to that. Okay, so let's build a thing. So now I'm gonna start taking these pieces and I am going to make. So, so far you're putting, like, this is a class. Oh no, wait, you're putting four. Yeah. So instead of doing the traditional three, which would give you a nice flat surface, you've gone up to four times 60. So you've got 240 degrees in a square. What should square. be 360? Yeah. So, so you, you're, you're under by a bit. And so now I've got a square there. I'm going to so build on a square, a square this way. But instead of 90 degree corners, there's 60 degrees. So it's, it's a, a very lacking square. And then you're going to keep doing that. I'm going to make another okay. square here. And I'm going to keep going. You can make a cube. Um. Well, of sorts. Of sorts. A cube out of deficient squares. So, yeah, well now I've got um, okay, so three, three, three squares. Row. And then you're going to finish the... And to connect up that. So now... Now you've got what would be like the center belt of a cube. Yeah, and so I've got... But you can't kind of close the top and bottom because they flare out instead yeah, of flaring too in. Too many. Oh, that's interesting. Too many. So if I sit that up like this, that's your kind of, what would be the ring mm. around the middle of a cube, but now the top, 
that, that you can't you can't close that off to give you the last square. Yeah. And so what I could do now is take. So put it this way. Yep. I can take. Oh, those pairs. pairs. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and add oh, loops there. so you can put loops there. And I can add. And then loops there. and loops and loops and carry on and carry on. Which brings um, us to, is that all this is? That's what this is. Oh, they're so, and it's never going to end, right? So this is this is a lattice now, which will carry on without yep. end, but obviously for um, and, practical reasons, we've stopped it there. So this was discovered in the 19th century. Oh, really? By Schwartz. Um, and so the, at that stage, people were studying what are called minimal surfaces. Right. So we've talked about the Gaussian curvature. Well, you also have the, the mean curvature. Right. Instead of multiplying the two numbers together, yep. you add them well, you add by, them. by two. So you average you find the, the average. two. Yeah. Oh, nice. And if you have mean curvature zero, right. you're what's called a minimal surface. And so that's like, a, well, it's, it's like a soap film, but not containing air. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of... It's the minimal possible surface to get from whatever your constraints yeah. are. Right. And, and so the sphere... Is, is, is an example of a minimal surface, but not in the sense we're talking about now. Right, okay. These, so the, 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 the flat sheet, yep. the infinite flat plane, that's a minimal that's surface. That's pretty efficient. Um, because it, zero plus zero divided by two... Is zero. is zero. The average is zero. Now, let's instead um, look at something like this. So this, you have one curvature going... One way, yep. yeah, and they, they're, but they're the same curvature on both parts of the saddle, and, and so, so they perfectly cancel cancels out. Yeah, and so these are very sort of energy efficient. We're getting back into the infomercial. You can, you can push boing, it down, boing, and it yep. just plumps up. And you you find these these sort of structures turn up all over nature because they're sort of these efficient um, structures. And because that, that zero curvature, again, gives it... It means that I can't make this more energy efficient by, by bending locally. But it, oh, right. So everything locally is as, as good as it's going to be. Yeah. There's no motivation for it to settle into a different yeah. arrangement. Um, now, it, it should be said that uh, whilst... You know, what, what's causing the shape here is some sort of energy minimization process. Um, we're really only approximating... A minimal surface, uh, you know, the, the, the actual surface isn't, you know, these things are not necessarily going exactly on the surface. No, so, right, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, we have this sort of it's nice version of it. of it. And it, it shares a lot of the properties, in particular, that behavior with the squares and that amount of curvature that's uh, correct for yeah. this surface. And so, you know, in the, the 19th century, mathematicians were realizing you could have minimal surfaces which weren't the plane. And they started getting very excited about finding various ones. So um, examples include the um, cardioid oh, okay. and the helicoid. Right. And um, they um, actually form a family of surfaces. Because that, that's where you distort from one to the other. Yes. Yeah. So you can actually transform the surface called the cardioid, yeah. which has mean curvature zero, um, into... The helicoid. We have a graphic of this that we're going to put over the video. So you rendered this in, what's the name of the software? Uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. Rhino and Grasshopper made what you're looking at here. And are all the in-between steps minimal surfaces? Yes, but they're... Yes, but no. Yes, but no. They, they are, but they're not... Um, they are immersed surface, not embedded surfaces. So they're self-intersecting. Right. And we get a bit upset when surfaces self-intersect. Yeah. So at either end, they're good. Yeah. But going from one to the other, while minimal has intersection points. Yeah. And so with this, so what Schwartz showed, so this is um, one surface. Yeah. And if you remember, so we made this, if I can find the earlier model, grab it. Um, so this model, you know, so imagine we have this thing um, sort of looping around and connecting back up. Well, imagine if we just sort of, Disconnect it and sort of, you know, push it against itself. Oh, so okay. we sort of Distort twist it. it. So, so we, we go to instead of having a loop. Yeah. And and if spiral and and you might recognise what's happening here. It's pretty close to what was happening in that cardioid helicoid yep. animation. 
And, and when we do that, so, so Schwartz knew about that, and um, he found this. this one. So this is the same basic idea. But see, now you can see they, they spiral. Wow. So different surface. Different surface, but still. Same properties. Still immersed, still yeah. triply periodic, and still dividing space into two regions that are the same, but weaved together everywhere. Sort of two. And at this stage, it's really two different labyrinths almost. Yeah. Uh, you've no longer, you know, it's, so that previous one, the, the sort of tunnels form the edges that you would get if, if you took cubes and stacked them and just right. took the edges of the cubes. This one forms the sort of structure of diamond. Oh, cool. Um, and so, you know, Schwartz found these two surfaces. I think there, there was some work of one of his students um, that he, was, uh, he, he, he built on, but we have these surfaces. And so this is called the Schwartz D surface. Schwartz D? For, for diamond. Diamond. And uh, the other one is the Schwartz, this one here. Yep. Is the Schwartz P surface uh, for primitive. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was the That's first one, it's the easiest one. Yeah. Um, and so, and what you can do is you can transform from this one into this one. They have the same local structure. Oh. And now, so on the way from there to there, to there they self intersect. So it's like the animation we saw a second ago. You yeah. could do that from there to there, yeah. but you all the in-between steps had this intersection or going Or so on. Schwartz believed. And so, now this is an interesting bit of the story, because the story gets taken on not by a mathematician, but actually by a chemist who worked for NASA. Right. Um, called Alan Schoen. And he got really fascinated about these things and building models of them. And what he noticed is that there's... So the, you know, this has the symmetry of this thing, the diamond lattice. Yep. This has the symmetry of the cubic lattice. Okay. There's sort of a symmetry group between them. Oh. In some some sense. It can be called the triamond. Conway's name for it. And that, yeah, who are we to argue with Conway? Um, it's it's the, the triamond. Tr the triamond. So you have a, the, the triamond lattice and the um, this triamond group. And it's kind of like you said, it's a midpoint between these two symmetry groups. Yeah. And, and so, so he, he thought, well, this should be a surface for it. Yeah. And the natural place to look was on this path going from one to another that Schwartz believed had everything self-intersecting. And there... Lo, lo and behold, in the middle, it's this... No way! ...crazy thing, which is somehow between... It's the between, two. between the so P you, and the D. You've got sort of, the, you know, it's sort of the tunnels get twisted as you go around wow. them. And, and this is an object called the gyroid. And this is what the chemist found. Yeah. And it matches that symmetry group. So, yeah. And he, it, so, so Schoen found this in the, in the 70s. And he sort of showed that it existed by making physical models of it. That's great. But there wasn't a mathematical, you know, his, his methods were sort of really... They were based in reality. Chemists. So, so mathematicians couldn't really get their hands on them. And it wasn't until um, 1989 that there was the first actual proof that this thing existed. existed. And it doesn't self-intersect? No. So the entire path is all self-intersection from, from the P until this one? Yep. And then it goes back into self-intersection until this one? Yep. So it's this little island yep. right in the middle? Yep. And why was it missed for so long? Uh, well, firstly, that symmetry group is, uh, I don't think that symmetry group was known about. Oh, okay. So, they're, they're so no the 19th idea. century group theory was not doing that well. You know, people were not ready for that level of abstraction. Right. Um, you could argue we're not yet ready for right. that level of abstraction. But, um, so uh, it was part, you know, just the triamond. And the triamond is a very interesting group because it's sort of been rediscovered many times by different people. Oh, cool. Um, and then forgotten about a bit, and that you know, it, um, and it, if you want to know a lot about that, then um, Conway and Heim Goodman Strauss's book, *The Symmetry of Things*, or *The Symmetries of Things*. I can never remember. Or *The Symmetries of Things*. Google it. Uh, fantastic book. Lots of pictures, um, and really. So the thing to realize about that book is I, there are very few people for whom 
the beginning would be too hard. And there's probably nobody for whom the end is easy. Too easy. It sort of ramps up through. It loses everyone at some point in yes. the book. It, it, it finishes with them sort of talking about you know, what topics that uh, the three authors were interested in talking about and the sort of having that sort of fun, but really research questions. Well, that's important that, I mean, people are often afraid to do maths because they won't get it. And the point yeah. is everyone doesn't get it. It just depends where you're up to yeah. in your learning. Uh, and also, throughout it has beautiful pictures. Well, that's just, actually, you know what? That is a really good point. Because all of this, and even the chemist, mm. is all about pictures and models and making it and playing yeah. with it. And I, I love, I mean, I mean, you know me, I like putting ridiculous mass things. <laughs> and you obviously, you come up with all this ridiculous stuff. Yes. And the fact that you can now build this using your curvahedra, I think is fantastic. Well, and so I have to say, I grew up with the sort of photos of Conway's office and those sort of, yeah, the crazy geometer in his, and I think somewhere in the middle of making curvahedra and having this sort of stuff, I, 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 yes, I've, I've become, I've become, I've become <laughs> that, become, well, good or bad. <laughs> There's a little bit of Conway in all of us. So anyway, I think that's probably a good point to wrap up yeah. this bonus video. Thank you so much for watching the extended maths video. We'll put some links below. I may forget some. If I do, just in the comments, add in any extra resources or things you find that you think are interesting. And thanks again to Edmund. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's been good.